Hello, hello fellow prospectors, my name is Manachanter and welcome to another video on Icarus, the new survival game from Rocketworks. This game supports both solo and co-op play within an incredible handcrafted environment. Players who participated in the numerous beta weekends were able to team up and tackle the challenges that the game presented to them. In order to allow players to do this, Rocketworks has implemented an effective multiplayer system. However, how this system works may not be evident to some players. In my overview video, I briefly touched on how the multiplayer works in the game. In this video, I will attempt to pull back the curtain on how the game allows prospectors to band together, as well as the main benefits and disadvantages for the approach which has been taken. As I covered previously, the game is described as using a peer-to-peer -peer networking setup. This is a very loose definition as applied to networking, and this is where basic knowledge of the terminology involved can help you understand how Icarus works, and how to ensure you manage your gameplay sessions in the best way. Icarus uses Unreal Engine 4 as the engine it is built on. This engine handles multiplayer sessions in one of three ways, based on how the game is designed and also the requirements. Firstly, we have local games, which are mainly designed for console split-screen games, However, some PC games also let you play locally with multiple players. Think of this as like you and a friend playing a fighting game on the same screen. We also have dedicated servers where all players connect to a server session that is created for the purposes of only handling the multiplayer session. These servers can be hosted in data centers, either owned by the developers or by private companies, or players can also install dedicated servers for some games on their own hardware. The server program is always run independent of the game client itself, with its own process and hardware requirements. The last type is historically called a listen server, and allows players to launch a game session which is then open to allow other players to join. This means that both the server and game client are using a shared process and shared resources. This listen server handles all the game calculations for all connected players. Usually, other players will connect to this listen server via a session management interface, whether within the game or via some other method. This listen server setup is the method used by Icarus. Icarus currently manages session visibility using the Steam friends list, so in order for other players to successfully connect to your session, you need to be set to online on Steam, as well as both players needing to have each other on their friends list. Players can use either the interface within the game to connect, or via the Steam friends list as either an invite from the host, or by a client using the join game option. To understand the use of peer-to-peer -to, -peer to describe the setup, you need to also understand how modern gaming has driven the need for more robust multiplayer network setups, and that the use of the word peer in gaming network terms is not the same as the use of the word in other network terminology, for example BitTorrents. In gaming terms, peer is really just a replacement for player so it is referring to direct player-to-player -player gaming, as opposed to player-to-server, since the listen server host is also technically a player. While other games might use a more decentralized network setup, which is more commonly called meshing or a mesh network setup, this is not an option for games using the Unreal Engine 4. Another recent game in the same survival genre as Icarus is Valheim, and a semi-mesh network is the basis of how Valheim handles multiplayer setups. In Valheim, player A initiates the session, and others join. The first player to enter new regions of the map becomes the temporary host for that region within the mesh network, but only player A has the save file and can start the server initially. Icarus, through the use of Unreal Engine 4 and the listen server setup, uses a back-end session manager server to manage the storage and transfer of this session file. This means that any player who is authorized to play in the session can initiate the listen server if another player has not already started it. While one player might be the mission creator and set up the initial session, any player who connects to that session is then authorized to be able to launch it if no one else is online. This ability to migrate the host to different authorized players is how the use of peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer can be justified. However, no matter who loads the initial session, there is still only going to be one listen server, and all server-based calculations will be carried out on that host. So, what does this mean for us, the players? Well, there are a few immediate benefits to using this setup. Removing the need for Rocketworks to develop and also host dedicated gaming servers drives down the overall cost of the studio. This means the game can be sold to us cheaper, 
and the long-term support costs remove the need to maintain a steady source of revenue past the initial sale period. Additionally, it means that the game network can expand as demanded. There should, in theory, be far less chance of the game experiencing the launch day, authentication and connectivity issues that plague other online games, which means more playtime for us. However, it also means that players need to know what to expect when they want to play multiplayer sessions. When you're playing solo, you are also acting as a listen server, even when no one else is connected, so you are technically a host player in networking terms. This will have a base requirement on your local hardware, mainly your CPU and RAM, in order to run the server, as well as your internet bandwidth. For consistency, I'll refer to this as the listen server usage. This is on top of the strain on your CPU, GPU and RAM in order to render the game client itself, which I will call the player client usage. As a community, we really haven't had the time to test the requirements per client connection. Some of the community players will probably get the full numbers after release. When another player, which I'll refer to as a client player, connects to your session and plays beside you, this will start to increase the listen server requirements. Possibly not by much because an additional player on your screen will not require much. Adding more and more client players, however, will start to increase the listen server usage. Then, when these players start to spread out, the strain on the listen server will increase even more as it will not only have to spawn and manage resources in the same region as the host player, but it will also need to handle the calculations for every other region that client players are in. Host players might be able to handle the game solo, but their hardware could start to struggle as more and more clients connect. It also means that each client player will be affected not only by any latency or connectivity issues on their own connection, but also those on the host player's connection. Additionally, geographical location can affect this. For example, if 7 of 8 players in a session are based in the EU and one player is based on the west coast of the US, it makes sense for one of the EU players to be the host in order to reduce the average latency for the majority of players. So any regular groups will benefit from communicating early on to identify who has the best combination of hardware and connectivity to reduce negative impact on the group. Another downside of the listen server setup, however, is that the session relies on the host player staying connected. A session will end for all players if the host disconnects. While the engine does have the ability to automatically migrate hosts when the host player disconnects, there are some technical limitations to this. Early beta tests did have this enabled, but Rocketworks has disabled this for now. Based on comments on the Discord server, they might bring the functionality back in a future update. For now, players who experience this will just need to connect to a new session. One last thing to mention is that as the listen server is acting as a single source of truth for the session, it is also the only one that connects to the backend session manager server. This is done at regular intervals, but there is always a chance that a host disconnect can happen and the new session will need to roll back to the last valid save. This could be minutes old, especially if the host player is having enough connectivity issues to cause the disconnect in the first place. Players should then be aware that if they load up a new session, there could be a rollback and things like levels, talent spent and items crafted could disappear. As I mentioned in my pre-release overview video, I do believe this is the best way to handle multiplayer in a game like Icarus, but there is definitely a need for better communication from Rocketworks as to the mechanics of it, and also some better insight as to the additional resource requirements for host players beyond those listed on the Steam page. On that note folks, I'll end this video here. If you liked what you've seen, please consider giving a thumbs up on the video or even subscribing, and leave a comment below or reach out to me via the Icarus Discord if you have any suggestions for future content. I'm on the server using the same name as I do here. Happy hunting folks, and remember, don't feed the raccoons.